Hey guys and welcome back to my channel for a brand new F1 2018 video. We're here in China for episode 3 of our F1 2018 career on here with Haas. So in the previous race, as you remember, we had a bad, bad weekend in all honesty. Back, uh, good qualifying session, but a bad race. So I don't want to scrape it, so go check out my latest video. It's been uploaded yesterday. But this time here in China, uh, I'm also going to show you some highlights of my practice session. And the video is going to be just about a little bit longer. But um, yeah, you tell me down in the comments below if you want me to make the videos longer with the practice tests or just make them short without the practice tests. Um, but as you can see, I changed also the AI driver level. It's now on Ultimate 105. So we expect a harder and tougher weekend here in China for this um, race and in general qualifying station. You know, it's going to be a tougher challenge in... Um, in in all its um, in in all honesty, you know, we we we're, we're, we're gonna be like probably closer to the midfield. I expect to the midfield runners, and we're not gonna be able to compete with the top runners. Not that we actually competed with them in the previous races, but we were close in terms of qualifying pace and probably a bit also the race pace. But um, you know, we could uh, stay ahead of them in a, in a race, but. Um, as you can see on the track acclimatization test, we are and it was a good practice session in all honesty. I had some uh, good results and uh, tire management test also. On my first lap, a good result, and then I had to cheat a little bit, you know, slow down a little bit to get that perfect result. I mean, it, it's in. It's not a shit. I mean, I need to get the perfect result, get as many research points as possible because has uh, has the potential to actually compete with the top runners we can I can compete with the top runners in a car like this because we're not really that far off the pace from the top runners so with a few updates on the aerodynamic uh, package and also the powertrain and the sasses we could be very close uh, by the end of the season to the top runners so I, I would like to win a race with Haas even though I'm thinking about you know I'm thinking am I going to change teams next season or something you know it's uh, I don't know we need we need to to consider that you also need to suggest me a few things because it's going to be a huge dilemma but um, now as you can see did uh, the qualifying pace test, did the ERS management test, and did the tire management test and now on to the race strategy test which was my final state, uh, my final practice test and it was also on practice 2 so I didn't actually compete on practice 3 so as you can see right here just I think I, I touched the, the ball out there but um, Perfect result also on the race strategy test, so it was a pretty good uh, practice session. Only a pass on the qualifying pace test, and from that on, it was a really good practice uh, session, uh, in all honesty. Really good. The fans really seem to enjoy that. You made it look easy. Alright, so we got some interviews You've got a bit after of rivalry going on. How did that come about? Practice 2, rival with Kevin, let's just say. We're not going to be arrogant, Pure is going to compare to our similar ability. There you go. You really went all out in practice today. Are you testing new components? Not yet. Um, don't really, don't really think I've got to answer anything here. Okay, I don't want to do that. I this want to select the, the right season. option. How do you think things are going to go for you? Um, no, I'm not going for the title. I'm not. Um, with a great team like this I can't fail because we're, we're in Appreciate a great team your time. we're in a great team so I can't really fail at that point you know um, so also some resource points and big news guys here in China we're going to be upgrading our car finally after three races because I think that I want to be I want to have some upgrades ready for Spain because it's one of my favorite tracks and I would love to have them ready and not to be failed because I've had uh, some upgrades might come out as failures unfortunately so that's not really uh, coming to, to hear about this game but first things first let's just upgrade the aerodynamic part of the car and tertiary will I think it, it was something about the rear wing and the other was about the halo so and these are also like um, this is for I think the diamond thing is for the quality if they fail and the efficiency is uh, wait 
I need to, I need to rethink about this. I think the efficiency is about uh, if they fail or not, and the quality is about how fast they come. Uh, or the or it's different. I don't, I don't even I don't really know. But we're going to upgrade both the diamond and the efficiency one, and we've also upgraded the rear wing, as you can see right here, and. Yeah, we're going to the quality control and the efficiency upgrades on the aerodynamics. We're not going to upgrade the powertrain yet because we've got a Ferrari engine and I'm good with it at, uh, for the time being. We're going to be upgrading the sasses. Once again, upgrade the efficiency and upgrade also the quality control. And we're also going to be upgrading the central under tray, which is going to reduce the weight of the car, if I'm, if I'm correct. Uh, something like that. And also, we're going to be upgrading the quality control of um, the Sussex upgrade on uh, the Sussex package. So, some great upgrade upgrades done, but let's see if they're gonna fail, if they're gonna uh, beat to the car as soon as possible. I want them in the car by Spain because it's my favorite track and I want to do well there, you know what I mean. Um, next up, probably the powertrain, I'm gonna let durability for the final part of the upgrades because of the time being durability seems fine to me and the parts of the engine are pretty fine but um, yeah after those upgrades we are now ready to go into qualifying station and uh, use our old car for the time being guys so it's time for Q1 as you can already see onto my first lap right here my face timed lap and I'm really excited already for the Spanish Grand Prix to see if the upgrades are gonna come in time you know it's gonna be pretty interesting to see that but after that we'll go I mean we'll go Russia which it's not really a bad track for me it's fine but uh, let's concentrate now on to the qualifying station we're currently in Nate's position and I went in for another lap straight after my first one and that is going to put me on position 7 right ahead of my teammate behind the Renaults and that was pretty much enough to put me in 10th position and Kevin onto 11th with also Mercedes and the Ferrari on the soft tire so you know it's a bit frustrating to see that because you, you, you we can we might see one of the house out of Q3 but the two Zarbers are out the two Williams are out and Brendan Hartley is out so this time we see two Zarbers out of uh, Q2 and Pierre Gasly onto Q2 you know through to Q2 it's interesting to see a Toro Rosso 3 to Q2. I think the last time we've seen that was in Australia with Brendan. And as you can see now, we're on to Q2. I've already set the lap. I've already set the lap. Sorry for my voice crack. Uh, I've already set a lap. And it's a 134.8. So, um, not such a good lap. But now we're on a much improved lap. A 1.2 improvement. And now as we go through the final corner, it's a 1.7 second improvement so I think that's gonna be enough for Q3 and I think yes it's gonna be it's uh, up into P7 it, it was a pretty pretty good lap and after that I've also done another lap as you can see this time not such a big difference only 15 thousands faster than my previous one but it was good to set that lap and uh, that lap has put us through to Q2 through to Q3 I'm sorry and surprisingly enough both me and Kevin are through to Q3 so that's pretty good to see. Uh, I mean, we're still not going to have the advantage to select the tire we want, but uh, yeah, the guys who haven't passed is the two four seniors, Carlos Sainz, Stoffel Van Dorn, and also Pierre Gasly, who's going to be starting from P15, uh, the Chinese Grand Prix. And for the time being, as we are on to Q3, I have already set a lap on the 133 dead, and that has put us up into P8. But with that much improved lap, but that improved lap by five tenths, we are now going to be ahead of uh, also the Renault of Nico Hungerberg. And uh, as I'm getting ready for my final lap, I've got Verstappen right ahead of me, who is I think not going to slow me down because he's also going to start um, his uh, quick lap now. And uh, unfortunately, my lap got uh, interrupted by Lewis Hamilton, who decided actually Valtteri Bottas, who decided to raise me onto my final lap even though I was improving by sector 2 but you know it's fine it's P7 uh, once again top of the midfield and it you know for ultimate AI my Kevin uh, my teammate Kevin actually a long way off the pace there by 9 tenths I think that's uh, that is right here or 6 tenths in tenths position behind Nico Hulkenberg but as for me 
close to the to the Red Bulls again. Let's get ready for the race. Great work out there today. How do you think it went? Uh, it was cool. It's been a great <laughs> qualifying session for you. Are you going to carry that momentum into the race? That's the plan, in all honesty. So, yeah, that's the plan. Okay, let's uh, answer that. We've not seen much development progression for your car recently. Come on. Why is that? Why is that? Because I won my grades for Spain. <laughs> and I was uh, conserving resource points. Why is there not an answer like that? <laughs> Appreciate your time. All right, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, but um, I was uh, talking about the ultimate AI and being very close to the Red Bull. So seems like we've performed very well here in China. You know, ultimate AI and being so close to the Red Bulls and also quite uh, like three tenths ahead of uh, the Renault team. I'm really happy about the result. Great qualifying session. Now, after the interviews and all that, let's get ready for an exciting race here in China. Hard work, ingenuity and ambition. All things you'll find in abundance amongst the 15 million people of Shanghai over there to our southeast. And we've got plenty of that here on the grid as well. 20,000 horsepower, give or take, chomping at the bit to be unleashed for the Chinese Grand Prix. Your target today is 10th place. So yeah, we the team has set a target of 10th place for this race. Uh, let's hope it's not going to be the same case like in Bahrain, where I ended up in 11th place. A horrib horrible race. I hope you have already checked out the video and I haven't scripted it for you. But um, uh, for the time being, the strategy is ultras and then two stops for softs. I was trying to think of a strategy of starting on the ultras and then going till the end on a set of mediums, but I think that would be quite hard to get and achieve. We need to stay in formation and start bringing the car up to temperature, please. Get some load into the tyres and work the brakes. We want them nice and warm by the end of the lap. So I just went for the typical strategy of ultra soft softs, but now, as the grid is reforming right now, we're setting on the grid. We're sitting on the grid to start this race, seventh position, just like in Bahrain. Just like in Bahrain, let's hope we're gonna have a good start like in Bahrain. You know, gain some positions and this time, have a good strategy and a good race in general. Five lights and it's lights out and away we go for the Chinese Grand Prix. Not a great start at all, not a great launching there. All the top cars have got off to a better start and I've got also my inside but into turn one I'm gonna try and go around the outside of uh, Max Verstappen and probably even Valtteri Bottas. We have now the inside light in terms of the inside light. We lock up our front left tyre, but um, I think we also made slight content with uh, Max Verstappen there. But we've gained one position onto the star now into this corner. I think the AI is going to break quite early, and that's what's happening here with Valtteri Bottas. No lock up at all from me, so that's good to see a fair and clear move there by me onto Valtteri Bottas. And also, the two Ferraris are leading on a 1 2 as they have the fastest car, and uh, I think that's Lewis Hamilton right behind uh, Kimi Raikkonen I should say um, and with Ricardo also behind Lewis it's gonna be probably a four-way fight to, to first position but um, here we're gonna see a replay of the star with Sebastian Vettel on Paul, Kimi Raikkonen on second the top teams great star by Raikkonen I would say and by Vettel yeah Raikkonen got off to an incredible start already on up on the inside of Vettel he even got the lead for for a couple of seconds here, even for 10-1, but then Fettel had the inside line, squeezed Raikkonen off as much as he needed to, and uh, I think he's going to be, yeah, he's, uh, he turned first into turn uh, number two, I think it is, and uh, into turn three, Raikkonen couldn't do anything to go up the inside, but as for us, it was a great start for us, we're now up into P5, already on lap number three, but Bottas, being in a faster car, is going to be able to attack us, both him and Verstappen, I think. I think I've, I've created a huge like uh, train of cars from uh, the Mercedes of Borders still to the midfield of the Force India. So that's not good to see. And uh, I don't know how much of a fight I can put to 
Valtteri now who goes up my inside very easily could I get him back up the inside I'm gonna try it oh yes he locked up he locked up we're very lucky here as Valtteri Bottas has missed the braking zone here and we're now back into P5 and I think he's in a, he's on a fight now with Max Verstappen sorry about that mistake <laughs> let's just forget that and already you can see Fetto, Hamilton and Danny Ricciardo are into the pit stops and I actually entered on lap number four to avoid the traffic from the midfield and I think that's the better strategy as Kimi Raikkonen also pits on the same lap so um, let's see our pit stop is it gonna be a good one are we gonna lose any positions to Valtteri or Max we're gonna have we're gonna have to wait and see and 2.7 pit stop great pit stop by the Haas team not the perfect one but it's gonna be enough to maintain to help us maintain the position to both Valtteri and Daniel but uh, and Max sorry about that and uh, Kevin Magnussen is actually going to pass me around the outside into turn one greedy hair Magnussen went for the other car and it, it worked out for him surprisingly enough so great strategy by Kevin he's now ahead of me but with uh, one lap all the s uh, soft tires so you know uh, we could we could get him but Kevin seems to be faster than Dan Ricciardo who I think on the team radio Jeff told me that Ricciardo has got a slight problem onto his car as we go around the outside of Kevin he left me room there and he now touched me a little bit on the rear here but um, we make the move stick we're now ahead of Kevin but now it's time for Dan Ricciardo who probably has a, an issue with his engine it's gonna be an easy move for me and for my teammate who is coming very fast there and he's probably gonna try and make a move around the outside here let's see if he's gonna make it stick it's probably not gonna be able to to hold on to that outside line but for the time being you can see I think if that's Kimi Raikkonen it's a Ferrari being held back from the midfield cars who are yet to stop because this time I think on the soft tires but uh, as far as Dan Ricciardo has got a problem with his car and we got away from him pretty easily now we're also gonna make an easy move on Pierre Gasly who is uh, who started the race on a set of soft so he's still out and uh, I think yeah that's Kimi Raikkonen right ahead of me who's stuck behind the Williams of uh, both the Williams actually you can see both the Williams are there and also Zauber of Marcus Ericsson who we are going to overtake right now he's also got DRS so it's gonna be pretty tough to actually overtake him the the slipstream is not gonna work according to plan and I should have put that ERS on overtake mode yo the ERS is actually really important if you put it on overtake mode you're much faster on the straight line so whenever you're trying to make a move put it on overtake because high might not be enough to make the move if you're not brave enough on the brake so now time for Stroll bad exit by Lance Stroll there he just left a lot of space for me and I snatched the opportunity up the inside and now it's time for Sergi Sirotkin he doesn't have DRS so I'm not gonna put the DRS on overtake mode into the brakes I think I've locked up my rear wheel slightly there but um, it's a great move that puts us up into P7 now and with the pit stops being done uh, we're now on to P2 as you can see on a podium position as I've extended my um, my stint on the soft tires and Sebastian Vettel is easily going to overtake me up the inside he also locked up his wheel didn't leave me any space on the outside line there and that is gonna be P3 for me and I'm thinking about making a pit stop very soon sorry about the corner cut again um, I, seriously whenever whenever I edit some whenever I put some things onto the video it's it's a critical moment for the video I always cut that last corner I don't know what is up with me but um, we're now, Fedel I think is on the set of medium so he's probably going till the end of the race I don't really know what the strategy is for Seb here but Hamilton has also overtaken us but lap 18 it's time for my pit stop and uh, 10 laps ago you know I'm gonna put a set of softs I've extended that stint of soft for quite a lot of laps something like 13 laps so imagine I had a good pace with those soft tires imagine with a fresh soft soft with a fresh set of soft tires my English is terrible today um, you're gonna, these tires are only going to have 10 laps in them and I'm yet to understand the class thing here in the pit stops I always lose the momentum here as I get used to that but um, 
with, uh, with 10 laps to go, I think my soft tires are going to be on a magnificent pace, you know, they're going to be in a great temperature, they're not going to wear out any time soon till the end of the race, and by the way, uh, Valtteri Bottas, as you can see, has overtaken us, so we've got a job to do, Valtteri is in a faster car, I'm not going to say that all the time, but he's on a set of mediums, I've got uh, something like 3 lap fresh attire, so you know, you know guys, we could, we could, we could actually catch up to him and overtake him, you never know what's going to happen in this race, but the good news is that we're currently achieving what the team asked me to do, we are above P10 and we're also fighting with Valtteri Bottas at the moment, with 8 laps to go, we have caught up to the back of Valtteri Bottas and I'm going up the inside for the move into turn 1, now in terms of turn 2, are we going to stick it, incredible move, I've just pulled out an incredible move like in Bahrain with Kimi, this one has been more magnificent because it was so well timed there, up the inside and also fast as first sector there, as you can see we are flying in the house, ultimate AI, men, let, men, let me mention it again, ultimate AI and we are overtaking a Mercedes on the house. This is just incredible scenes. Now, around the outside of Charles Leclerc into turn one, he's also in a set of mediums. Probably he's going to be fighting for the points here in China. Great performance by the Zauber driver, but this time he cannot defend from me. I'm, I'm on an incredible run right now. The pace is just. He's just so good right now. I'm feeling so good on those soft tires. And after five laps, we caught up to the back of the four senior of Esteban Ocon. Both the four seniors are doing an incredible job, I think they both started outside the top 10 and with the same strategy as some other cars did on in Bahrain they've all of a sudden appeared on P4 and P5 so P4 is gonna be a bit of a... it's gonna be pretty tough to to achieve to get to Paris because he's a long way ahead but P5 as you can see right now going up the inside of Esteban Ocon, we've still got the inside line gonna push him just the bad why he's still on my inside but now on to the last corner I think we've got P5 onto our hands and this could be the fight till the end of the race Esteban Ocon now he's got the DRS I'm gonna choose the the outside line into turn one and he just about makes the move stick on the inside line I'm trying to go back to the inside line and get him again unfortunately I'm not gonna be able to do that because he got an incredible run up the inside and then he maintained the momentum that he got into the corner and that's a great move done by Esteban Ocon who gives me a fight now for P5 here for the top 5 finish for this Chinese Grand Prix let's see if we're gonna get him this time around onto the back straight DRS is open and down into the penultimate corner it's gonna be a move onto Esteban Ocon we're still side by side this time I'm gonna push him more wide and he's gonna lose the momentum onto the exit of the corner and that is going to be enough to get us P5 as I don't think he's going to be able to attack me again onto the start finish straight so great move done unfortunately we're not going to be able to get Sergio Perez as he's 7.7 seconds ahead of me so great strategy by both of Forsini it's incredible big ups to Forsini like what a strategy that was I think they started the softs and went up to the medium so they, they maintained a good pace and all of a sudden they are ahead of uh, like myself, ahead of Button, ahead of Button, I said. Oh my God, ahead of Bottas and Max Verstappen, and um, as uh, we're onto the final lap, we're gonna go and watch the winner, Sebastian Vettel, coming across the line for another win. As uh, in Bahrain, two in a row for Sebastian Vettel here in China. A great race once again. I think Hamilton finished second and Kimi Raikkonen finished third. So that is going to give the lead onto the driver standings for. Fettel, but as for us, great race once again, P7, P5, sorry, for the Chinese Grand Prix, what a great race that was, great strategy, great pace, really enjoyed it. So, another excellent win from Ferrari. And Anthony Davidson, give me your thoughts, how did they accomplish this result? I feel like consistency was probably the key today, there's being quick, and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalize on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. So, here they come now, out onto the podium. Wherever you go, anywhere in the world,
The prancing horse flags are dominant in the grandstands and they're out in force again today. It's Ferrari on the top step once more. So yeah, Ferrari winning three races in a row. Two with uh, Sebastian and one with Kimi. As for me, it's another point facing position and another top five, I think, uh, finishing uh, position, you know. I think we've also been on the top five in Australia, if I'm not correct, correct me down in the comments below. Unfortunately, I saw that Kevin couldn't actually uh, get into the top ten, so he's no points from Kevin this time around with the Haas F1 team. And Charles Leclerc, congratulations to Charles here, getting the, some points here for the Zauber team. Once again, 10th position for Leclerc here, one point for Zauber. Also, Carlos Sainz doing a great race um, after I think Nico Hulkenberg retired from the race. So, nice position for Carlos Sainz. And we finish ahead of Esteban, Ricardo, and Bottas. Great race. As you can see, Esteban signed from 13th and Sergio from 11th. And they both finished uh, in 6th and 4th position, respectively. So, great race for both the four Indian drivers. As for, the, as for our rivalry here with Kevin Magnussen, it's going pretty good, <laughs> he's pulling pretty well. And um, I think I should also choose a rival, probably by next episode I should do that. Because it's time to choose a rival, I think after choosing a rival, if you beat him, you have a greater reputation around uh, the other teams and also get some more resource points, I'm not really sure about that. But um, it's been a great race in all honesty, one of the most enjoyable races, much more enjoyable than in Australia. Even though we finished, I think, uh, in the same position, if I'm not mistaken. But, um, yeah, I think we also finished P5 in Australia. But here in China, we had a greater pace. We attacked people, we, we attacked drivers. And it was a much more aggressive race uh, with uh, more overtakes and more defending to do. And in general, greater feeling of the track, you know, much, much more fast track here. And uh, it was very enjoyable to drive here in China. Even though I don't really like China's track. I had one of my best races here for the time being and driver standings was still 6th. Perez also after his good performance is going to put Force India in 3rd position as you can see. But um, yeah that's where I'm going to end this video for today guys. If you enjoyed smash the like button. If you haven't subscribed already subscribe. Follow me on Twitter and I'll see you in the next video guys. Which probably could be even WC7. I'm not really sure about that. I'll see you next one. Goodbye guys. <laughs>